Hey everyone, Ryan here, or m Productions, and today we're taking a look at the two most recent LEGO Star Wars X-Wing Starfighters. On the left here, we have the model from 2018, and on the right, the brand new 2021 model. And we'll, of course, use the m &R comparison system to pit the two sets together and help you decide which set is best for you, or maybe you're just watching this video for fun and you don't actually intend on buying either of these. Either way, hopefully you enjoy. Let's get into the basic info on each set. Set 75218 on the left, again, released during the summer of 2018 for $80. That's $83 adjusted for inflation. It included 730 pieces and four minifigures you see before you. On the right, we have set 75301 with a January 2021 release with 474 pieces with four minifigures. The minifigure selection for the 2018 version goes as such with Luke Skywalker, R2-D2, Big Star Clader, and R2. Q2. Not a bad selection, but I think most people complained, including myself, about the newer style Rebel Pilot helmets that only ever appeared in that set versus 2021, which has, along with all other LEGO Star Wars sets, reverted to the older style Rebel Helmet Pilot with Luke Skywalker. We also have another R2-D2, whom I believe is going to be unchanged, a Princess Leia that was previously only in a $200 set, so that's nice to see, and General Dodonna, who is exclusive to this $50 X-Wing, at least as of the time of recording this, although I doubt we ever see him in another set, as this is the first time we've seen him, and it took 22 years. So let's take a look at the direct comparables with R2-D2 and Luke Skywalker. If you've had R2-D2 once, you've had him a million times. R2-D2 showing up for his 22nd consecutive year in LEGO Star Wars. He shows up in quite a few sets every year. You probably already have one. It's not a big deal for either of these sets to have these characters. Luke Skywalker, on the other hand, is a bit of a different story and a more interesting comparison to make because... They made the big change with the helmets here, switching back to the older style Lego Rebel helmet. Again, this was the only set that ended up using them, and I'm not exactly sure why, but it can only be assumed that the backlash was so great both from the community and maybe even from just regular old consumers being like, what the hell is this? It's so big and it just felt out of place in what Lego is that they had to revert back, and that's what they did, and I think it does look better with the older style. The torso prints are also different on these figures, somewhat surprisingly. I kind of thought they would end up being the same, but Lego did make some changes. You can definitely notice it with the tubing, with the one tube dropping down to the left there, and on this one kind of hooks back up to the right. So a little bit different torso prints for these Luke Skywalkers for this set. Not exactly sure what inspired that change, but it is different. Here's a good look at the side of the helmets, and you can see, I mean, the bigger helmet is more detailed. I just think it looks ridiculous on top of that character. And here's your back view. Again, they were able to get much better wraparound printing on that newer helmet, and here you can see both characters' second faces. They stack up pretty well, but ultimately due to the helmet, I do like the 2021 version better. Big's Dark Lighter obviously also uses the same style helmet, just with a different print for 2018's X-Wing. All in all, though, I think the 2021 version has a better, more diverse lineup of characters, while 2018 has its pros and a reason to have two sets of characters, which we'll get into in a moment. 2021 just offers a more diverse lineup, and I think that's better for most people, myself included. Our next category is playability, which on the surface, just looking at it, may seem like it would end up being a tie because you'd think they'd have the same play features, but alas, they do not. The 2018 version actually has stud shooters on the side of the model. You can see them here. You may be opposed to stud shooters existing in LEGO at all, but the fact of the matter is it's a play feature. It can be fun for kids and you can shoot at things with them. And I think that's actually pretty neat. It's something that I think gets too much flack personally. You also have four, one, two, three, and four spring loaded shooters, one on each wing of the 2018 X-Wings. So you actually get quite a bit of firepower on this X-Wing and you can of course shoot them by pushing down or up on them depending on which position they are in. So you can shoot off all four just like that. And you could obviously take that off and mod it so you didn't have those stud shooters there if you wanted to, if you were just anti-playability. And then as far as the wings opening, you actually have this lever here. Now you can't really open the wings like this I and mean, you can open them, but they don't stay. You have actually push up on this lever it's actually quite an interesting mechanism that utilizes rubber bands in the back which can actually wear down over time we'll get to that a little bit later but you push up on this lever and the wings kind of clip into place you can also fold the landing gear up and just like that you have a very flyable ship very swooshable you can kind of hold it at the the back section here and you can see as i shake it nothing really moves you can hear the springs that's the spring loaded shooter springs but i mean as far as like the the wings being open it looks pretty cool and then you have this little cone piece at the bottom when you want to close the wings you can either push on it or you could actually drop it down on the ground and when it hits it's going to push up anyway 
but the wings will snap closed very fast, very hard, and it all just kind of works, comes together, and it actually makes for a lot of good play features. 2021 is a bit different in the play department. It loses the stud shooters on the side of the model. You can see just nothing there, obviously. And then it also only has half as many spring-loaded shooters on the wings. You can see just two on the bottom, not two on the top. That may score this set some design points later on. However, it will certainly not score any points for playability as it basically has what, a third of the play features here. So you have the spring-loaded shooters, which you can shoot off very easily by pushing up on them. But obviously you're missing two on the top from the last model and you're missing the stud shooters on the side again. So losing out on those play features kind of sucks, but the wings do have a nice functionality to them um, because you can just push down on this lever here. They'll swing on open. And just like that, you have the S foils in attack position. And then when you want them to close, you could either just kind of push up on them and they'll go back into the closed position. It's nowhere near as abrupt as the other one, but that's more of a design thing we'll get to. Or you can also just kind of land the ship. So when you're going to land it, you're done playing with it, you've swooshed it around enough, you can bring it in for landing. Trying to keep those open is a little bit tough sometimes, but it'll just slowly fold right back in just like that. So pretty close playability wise, but I definitely think the 2018 version has the edge. As far as design and display, I think for display, the 2018 version is going to be better. I just feel like it's a bigger and better set in that way, where it's just going to look better on display. It's more accurate in quite a few ways. However, the design may be a little bit more of a tricky thing to tackle here because they are similar, right? Like the 2021 version has a very similar footprint, very surprisingly so, because the same cannot be said for the TIE Fighter of 2021 versus the TIE Fighter of 2018. They they are very differently sized, but these somehow uh, retain a similar footprint. So I found that pretty interesting about the newer model, but something that's different about the design first off is gonna be the nose. Certainly this type of nose has been used on the Lego X-Wing for years and years and years at this point, but they finally changed it up and went with something different here. And I don't necessarily think this looks bad. I don't know if it's better than this one. It certainly feels like it's just as weak of a design where it'll like kind of snap off if you grab at it, just like I did with this one from 2018. You do lose a little bit of color accuracy with that blue piece kind of gone for some reason. The striping on the sides of the X-Wing is pretty similar. You can see that red stripe on both of them there. I think that design is held up pretty well. You can also see that red marking there, red marking there. Maybe the stud shooters take away from the design on you there. In this case, they're not there. So I think that that's a good thing for the newer model. No stud shooter on the side just means a more accurate design, just factually speaking. You also have that one by eight or 10 tile there. And in this case, they use like these slope pieces, which look nice, but the problem is that they don't stay together. Together, so there ends up being a gap. So that was something I never really liked about the older model. Now the engine intake here is certainly more accurate on the older set. However, on the newer set, they're smaller, which I feel like the size is more accurate, but they don't look as good. So it's a little bit of a give and take there. As far as the engine exhaust goes, you can see the look on the newer one is good. The look on the old one is good. The biggest change to me though, is that they took these engine pieces and they actually built them into design here because they actually introduced a new piece with this set. I'm not gonna pull it apart now, but there is a one by one Technic brick in there holding this in so that this doesn't pop off when you grab at it. But if I grab at this one, you can see I can actually pull it off. And I've had these fall off all the time on me when messing around with this 2018 version. So that's something that I think is bad about this design, good about this design. And if we flip that back, good about this design is this whole back section here. It's not as squared off as it is on the newer one. And you can see it's just a simpler design versus this one, which is a more detailed and accurate design. So it's a little trade off there. I think the top of that blocky area is also kind of interesting because both sets have interesting, unique concepts or the way that they do the wing mechanism on this one. It's obviously this lever thing on this one. It's just kind of like a button you push more or less, but this one has a weird like scissor design. It's all like a Technic block. This one's all kind of more integrated. I feel like this one you build like one, two, three sections. It's kind of fun how both sets are built completely differently and yet look somewhat very similar. So I think there's a lot of give and take here between the X-Wings. Obviously on this newer one, you have a sticker that represents Luke's X-Wing with the five red markings there. Over here, I have currently applied the Biggs Dark Lighter markings. However, this set actually came with Luke's as well, which I just kind of attached on the underside of the wing here to the X-Wing. So you get both options on the older one, which is kind of an interesting part of the design to be able to change out those tiles and have Luke or Biggs Dark Lighter as your pilot. Obviously in this case, Luke being the only 
Pilot. It's the only sticker included. Removing the spring-loaded shooters from the top wing, I think also looks pretty good. Gets rid of some of the clunkiness or chunkiness that they kind of add, so I do appreciate that. As far as the landing gear design goes, I think both sets are pretty good in their own right. You see this one's pretty strong and you can retract it. The back landing gear is just some brick. On the newer X-Wing, they use some ski pieces, so that's pretty nice. There's a bit of a weak design there. At some times, I can make it fall off. And on top of that, you can't retract the landing gear, so it's always there, and that's kind of annoying. Definitely not a pro for this set. You can see the underside there, just a 2 by 12 or whatever tile uh, holding together those sections. So kind of interesting to see that. You can definitely see it much easier on the bottom here, how those split up into sections. And I think that's pretty fun about that design. The cannons also received a redesign. I don't think one design necessarily looks better than the other because they're both kind of inaccurate. The circular dish piece they use here should really be rectangular and vertically placed circular just isn't accurate straight up. Now the windshield cockpit piece is actually really good on both sets. It's the same exact mold. However, on the newer set, it's a lighter gray color. On the older set, it's got a bit of a bluish tone to it. I looked at the pictures and I feel like it could go either way. It was just kind of a design choice they made with the new one, I feel like. And I do like it because I feel like it really fits the color scheme better of the X-Wings. But as far as the older one goes, you do have a printed control panel in there. You've got a seat for Luke or Big Starklighter, and you even have a fire extinguisher in the back, which is a bit of fun. The newer one just doesn't have as much space for stuff like that, so you end up with just a tiled off area for a seat, no fire extinguisher, and then a very simple control panel placement as well. You don't even have these sloped grill pieces for detail. You just have nothing there, and it actually looks kind of lame like that. You can also place R2-D2 in each set. So on the 2021 version, he sits pretty high. On the 2018 version, he sits much more accurately and lower into the model. I certainly prefer the older version of the way that r 2 sits in the model compared to the newer version. And one more thing about the design that I think shouldn't go unnoticed is that the 2018 version is simply more durable. If you pick it up and you hold the front and the back and you twist it, you'll see that there's not a lot of motion there. So that's really nice. If you hold the 2021 version from the front and the back, we'll even do it with the same exact hands here and you twist it, you can see there is quite a bit of motion between those sections because they're just not the strongest connection between them. And even now, I actually just ripped off that plate at the bottom. So you can see it's just not as durable in that way. And then the wings are another problem. If I grab the 2021 and pull that off, it's gonna pull off. I've even had these just kind of come off during regular use. Like there's just not a strong connection there. You can see how that kind of moves. The 2018 version, however, that is not gonna be a problem. You're not getting that wing off no matter what you do here as far as just pulling at it. But as far as the durability of it over time, you see this rubber band may wear down. And as such, the bottom wings will begin to sag. And that's a little bit of a letdown. You can always buy replacement rubber bands, but that won't be a problem on the new one because it's just a brick built design where the weight of each wing offsets the other wings, I think. So it's pretty straightforward with the new one. The older one, however, may show some wear and tear over time. I think it's pretty straightforward though that in general, the 2018 version has a better design overall than the 2021 version and it would also be better for display although that may come down to personal preference on the look of the x-wings if you're trying to pick one to put on your display you can pick that for yourself, but I would pick this one. As far as value goes, I think it's pretty close here, but I think that the better value is gonna be the $50 2021 X-Wing. It provides a very similarly sized set. It's generally gonna be the same play experience for kids as far as play features go, other than the missing stud shooter. Like it's it's generally the same and you still get four minifigures. I also think that the figures in the newer set are generally better as we touched on earlier. So for that reason, I just feel like it's a slightly better value at 50 versus $80. So you can see there's just not a huge difference for your $30 as far as just getting more for it other than a bigger, better build. I feel like if you're just looking at the value of it, 2021 is going to be slightly better. And that leaves us tied at two points apiece for both sets. Moving into the final category, MNR opinion. And certainly let me know your opinion in the comments section below. I do not have the ability to do polls on YouTube anymore. So no polls to figure out what you guys think is best, but definitely comment it down below. I like both of these sets. Quite a bit. They each have pros and cons. Certainly the biggest cons for the 2018 set to me are going to be like the helmets. Generally, otherwise, I think it's a pretty damn good set. And the 2021 obviously has some, some weakness to the build. It's a little scrawny uh, compared to 2018, but it has a good figure selection and is generally a better value. Like I, I really like what 2021 presents. 
as far as a newer style, smaller, cheaper X-Wing. And it really presents a really good value for a lot of people buying like a gift for maybe their kid or their cousin or whatever the case may be. You, I just feel like this is a better set for that. This is the Lego Star Wars Junkies X-Wing. Like maybe you and I watching this video, or is this one which is gonna be much more targeted towards parents buying their kids a Christmas gift or something, just a more affordable model and that's all fine. But I think ultimately for me, the best X-Wing certainly is the 2018 one. I mean, I think that's it's pretty obvious that it's better, but it just doesn't have as big of a gap as I thought you would see, especially given that the newer one is $30 cheaper. And with three to two, our final score, the 2018 set takes the crown for best X-Wing out of these two, at least. I did a full-fledged X-Wing comparison on my channel earlier in 2020. However, I would not be doing that again for this particular set. I just wanted to take a look at it versus the most recent one because I thought it was interesting given that it was a downsize. So that's why I just did the two for this video. But should you go out and buy this new X-Wing if you have this one, not unless you want the minifigures or your completionist collector. If you see this and you don't like it, don't buy it. I think that's a pretty obvious choice to make. I shouldn't have to tell you that. But if you like the figures, especially the General Dodonna and the Leia, whom you may very well and likely not have, you should probably buy this set. Now there's also the opportunity to go and buy this one on eBay or Bricklink right now if you are actually trying to determine between those two. And then you're looking at a much more difficult choice because this one can go for like 120 bucks on eBay or Bricklink sealed in the box versus this one which is gonna be $50 in store. And in that case, unless you've just fallen in love with this one, I would also say go with this one. Don't spend three times the price for this when you can buy this for 50 bucks in store now. That's just the trade off to me. Unfortunately, this one went up quite a bit in value, actually quite surprisingly, because it was always on sale for like 53 or 54 dollars. But yeah, that is my comparison of the 2021 versus the 2018 X-Wing. If you guys have anything to say, leave in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like, and you can check out more LEGO Star Wars comparisons on the end screen now.